Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you how you can work with text and strings in C-Sharp like a pro by using Humanizer. Now Humanizer is an open source library which I highly recommend you go on GitHub and give a star because it's an amazing library when it comes down to working with text in C-Sharp. It can handle things like simple uh, programmatic or user-friendly text, dates, time spans, numbers to specific cultures as well, and from numbers to text and text to index, there's so, so many things you can do with it. So in this video, I'm going to just introduce you to that library, show you some of its features, and hopefully you're going to see how some of those features might fit to something you're doing. Personally, when I deal with numbers or text on a culture-specific uh, nature, especially when it comes down to localized error messages, Humanizer comes very, very handy. But it can actually be used by so many other things in C-Sharp and .NET. So, if you're interested in that, stick around. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So, what do I have here? Well, I have a simple console application which has an array of functions that return a string. And the way this will work is if I run this, it will iterate over the array of functions and then just do whatever I say here, which is it's gonna print the, uh, the text. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm gonna use Humanizer and I'm gonna show you all the different ways Humanizer can interact with text by using that array. So what I'm gonna do first things first is go to minus NuGet packages and search for Humanizer. Now, as you can see, there's many, many packages depending on languages and cultures and stuff like that. I'm going to touch upon that in a second, but for now, we're only going to add the humanizer.core library. I'm going to install it here and close that. And I'm going to show you the simplest example. I'm going to take this user not found text, which I might have to display in a human way, which means for a human to read as part of a user friendly scenario. I can simply now do dot humanize and if I run this you'll see that user not found now doesn't have the underscores so it humanized the text in that sense however you might want to have a different way of casing that let's say you want to have it in a sentence well you can actually provide sentence title all caps or lowercase as part of a parameter in this method so in my scenario if I want to say you know, user not found in a, in a sentence, I can do that, and if I run it again, I have capital U in the beginning, and then user not found. So, from this very underscore uh, case that's not user-friendly to something that can be used on the front-end scenario, Humanizer can just simply provide that experience. I'm gonna add a comment here, I'm gonna say general stuff, because I'm actually going to have some other categories here depending on what we're dealing with. Now an interesting gotcha with Humanize uh, that you might be thinking is you don't want to change the case of some specific things, for example acronyms. Well, if I have HTML here, and HTML is an acronym, capital uh, case for all the numbers or, or, or text, as you can see, HTML stays intact. That's because Humanize can actually understand if something is an acronym and not touch it and that comes very handy when you have to have some acronym inside the text and you don't want to uh, change that for example if for some reason your message look like user not found html and you humanized that when i run this you'll see that the html still stays intact even though it was part of something that und undergone a different type of mutation we removed the underscores here now, what if you want to do the opposite? What if you have a user-friendly way and you want to turn it into a programmatic way? Well, that's where dehumanize comes into picture. So I can do dehumanize and have user not found in a sentence uh, case. And if I run that, you see that now that turns to user not found camel case. That's because that is the default way. Sorry, not camel case, Pascal case. Well, that's because that's the default way that humanizer will actually work with that piece of text. But it's completely up to you to override that. So you can simply say dot underscore. And now if I do that, it will take the human text and turn it into the first version, which is the unhuman, unhuman, is that even a word? Well, the programmatic looking text. Now, sometimes you have bigger text and you need to truncate it. Sometimes truncation happens on the front end, but if you have something like an API response and you need to trunca truncate something for some reason, you can actually do it by saying dot truncate and then provide the length that you want to truncate on 
and then you can also provide the truncation string for example dot 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 if you want it to be um, truncated and then end up with dot 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 so if I run that as you can see this is the dot 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 it's because the length is 14 including the dots and if I was to increase the dot here you see that we lost one of the characters so that's one of the things I wasn't actually aware in the beginning so that's interesting enough but what if you have instead of a string an enum and I have an example enum here with first value and second value and I want to get one of the values and I want to display them in a humanized way so I would have something like this where I have example enum dot first value and I can actually use humanize on that and if I execute that you see that it prints first value in a human way it, it uh, ignored the uh, Pascal case that the enum was on and then it printed that however you might want to override that well humanizer will use the description attribute and you can say this is the first value instead and without changing anything on my code I can simply run it and it's going to detect that and say this is the first value picking it up from the attribute the next feature which is actually what got me introduced in humanizer in the first place when working on my cosmos db sdk which would pick up a poco object read the name if you haven't specified one and then pluralize it for example you would have person a person class and i would get the name for that person class and i need to pluralize it so make it people uh, obviously person can become persons so i can't just add an s in the end um, i had to find a more elegant way turns out there's a pluralize method here so if i do person dot pluralize humanizer will kick in and change that to people that's amazing especially when you have response text based on the count of objects you have in a given enumerable i'm gonna leave it here for just simple text because sky is the limit there's so many ways you can combine those and change them so i'm gonna move on to something else that's very important to me which is dates dates especially when you're working on a translation scenario where there's so much you can do to translate a given date to another from both a text perspective and a cultural perspective well here's where humanizer kicks in and it solves a lot of those problems for us for example let's say i have date time utc now and then i'm gonna add uh minus 24 hours so i'm gonna go yesterday and i'm gonna humanize that date time so what do you expect to happen well when i run this this thing becomes yesterday because i humanized the version of the date time in that context the text is yesterday and you can actually take it even further for example if this was 36 hours it would turn into two days ago and you'll see later with cultures how this is also changed in a different language automatically but let's hold on to that for a second if i change that from hours to minutes and i go to the past 36 minutes they will say 36 minutes ago but if i change that and go i don't know 69 uh, minutes in the future it's gonna change to an hour from now so it's gonna ignore the nine extra minutes because in a human way you wouldn't say i'll see you in an hour and nine minutes i'll see you in about an hour or an hour from now um, so it puts all that into perspective now a lot of those things are actually overridable so it's completely up to you to override if you want to but this is the default behavior i'm going to show you how you can override a lot of that stuff as well another interesting thing that humanizer works with is time spans which is another thing that usually especially when it comes down to translations is a bit of a pickle when you have to deal with so let's say i have a time span from milliseconds and i have these milliseconds and i want to Printed in a humanized way. I can do just humanize, and if I run this, it will say four minutes. So take the milliseconds and humanize them to minutes. Now, if I want a different level of precision in that text, for example, I want to go all the way down to seconds, I can choose precision two, uh, and it goes hierarchically. So, for example, one is the default, it is the largest, two is the next one, and so on and so forth. And if I go here now, you see four minutes and 12 seconds. So you can actually customize that as well. And we can also do the following. We can have a time span of seven days and then you can humanize it for a max unit of, let's say, a day. And if I do that, you see that it returns uh, seven days because I did specify that the max unit I want is the day. The default should be 
seven days make a week so you see one week here so you can customize that as well now let's take a look at some case stuff we did touch upon it a bit here but let me just show you um, a few more things here so first you have uh, my full name and then you can say pascalize which will turn this into pascal case and if i do run it you'll see that now my name is in pascal case equally you can use the camelize extension method and that will turn into camel case so there is also underscore as we saw before which will put underscores between the uh, two strings and then lowercase them that's the standard underscore case then we have dasherize and hyphenize where if you have an underscore it will change it to a dash or a hyphen so if i run this you see that now the underscore is replaced and last but not least we also have kebabarize which will <laughs> which will change that into kebab case so if i run this you see it goes underscore with a hyphen in the middle so tons of case stuff that can come handy in so many different ways when you're working with text but just text and dates will get you so far so at some point you're going to have to work with numbers as well so you might need to say uh, one dot two words and then it will take the actual integer the number and change it into text so you have one here and that can be handy because you might also want to do things like two ordinal words where you want to say first or second or third or it's gonna support all that natively as you can see here and then you might also build a number that you want to display with a fluent api which is also supported so you might want to have 69 um, millions to uh, string and if i paste that and i run it then you see 69 million here and you might want to say 420 gigabytes to full words and you're gonna print that and then it's 420 gigabytes or that could be to string which in this case it's a bit different it's 420 gb so the shorter version so many things many units you can actually play with when it comes down to numbers as well not just text now last but not least i want to show you some culture stuff because Yes, Humanizer actually comes with a bunch of translations as well and also culture-specific, let's say, numbers if numbers are displayed in a specific way in uh, Russian and Greek and English it's going to be translated to one over the other and modified as well to fit that but for that to happen you need the uh, culture-specific package so for me I'm going to go with the uh, EL one because that's the only other one I know uh, the Greek one and you can do this on the thread level so you can set the culture on the thread level and then it will be supported but you might also want to do it manually so for me i'm going to have uh, the greek culture info which is el hyphen gr and then i can go here in the culture stuff and let's see how some of those things change now the debugger can actually do um utf8 i think so if i do um, two words and all of them actually support the culture. So if I say agree culture here and I say one, two words and I run it, it should, you should see nothing because the, this window is not UTF-8. But if I debug and I reach that and I evaluate it here, then you see that goes to Anna, which is one in Greek. And it's not stopping there. It can actually go way further than that. For example, we saw a few things like humanizing the hours. I can pass down the culture and this will also be humanized again let me just debug this because i don't think it's actually gonna display anything properly and it uses the greek word for yes there was success so as you can see there's a bunch of stuff you can do with it it will actually translate things like currencies numbers uh, the way they're displayed uh, dates there's so many i would highly recommend you check the documentation to see what is actually supported but i just want to show you that it is actually a feature that basically every method that is doing humanization does support and now the last thing i want to show you is now with pluralization here for example the person will be pluralized to people because it exists but if i had something like nick which is a name but it's not really recognized in the vocabulary inside humanizer if i pluralize that it will become nix and you might not want that so if you have a given text that doesn't have a plural in that way you can actually access humanizers vocabulary so you can say vocabularies.default.add 
you can have multiple things irregular plural singular uncountable we're gonna go add plural and we're gonna say that the plural for Nick is Nick and if I run this again Nick dot pluralize should no longer be pluralized because we add the plural which basically indicates that it is a singular so as you can see there's tons of stuff you can do I can go on and on but they have excellent documentation so I highly recommend you check that out and remember to give them a star because it is a free project but it brings so 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 much value that's all I had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making these videos possible if you want to support me as well you can find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well and I'll see you in the next video keep coding